Welcome to FSE Live. You know, Wayne Newton is synonymous with Las Vegas, but do you know where he got his start? Well, you can bet it is in downtown Las Vegas, and you can bet it was right here on Fremont Street. Stay tuned while we come to you live, live from the storied casino where Wayne Newton started at the wee age of 14. Fremont Street Experience in downtown Las Vegas. It's FSE Live with your host, Jeff Victor. Welcome to FSE Live right here on the Vegas Video Network. My name is Jeff Victor. I'm your host, and I'm also the president of the Fremont Street Experience, which explains why we're coming to you from a casino right here on the Fremont Street Experience. Tonight in Movers and Shakers, you meet the general manager of the famous Fremont Casino. You'll also be meeting, uh, let's see, we've got a uh, couple band members from the band Yellow Brick Road. They're playing out here every week and you want to talk to, to them. We've got uh, during Meet the Neighbors, one of the pioneers in high-rise uh, residential living right here in downtown. Very, very ballsy guy, a big, big pioneer in this business. And uh, also during Bets, Bets, I'll introduce you to a lady who's working very, very hard to further connect the Far East to Las Vegas. Stay tuned, let's get to Movers and Shakers. As I mentioned, we're coming to you live, live from the casino floor of the Fremont Casino right here on Fremont Street. And joining us to tell us all about this wonderful property is the general manager, Jim Sullivan. Jim, how you doing? Hey, Jeff, how are you today? Good to see you. Nice to be here. Well, thanks for, uh, this is quite a background. We've uh, done about six episodes so far, but none of them from inside a casino. Thank you very much for being so gracious. Awesome. Happy to host it for you. Well, I, you know, and I, I like that we're doing it from here because uh, the Fremont Casino has been yeah, you know, like a serious gambling house for for a lot of years. Uh, when, when did this place become the Fremont? You know, back in the early '80s, I believe it was 1984. Uh, the Gaming Commission actually raided this place and uh, were ready to close it down. They approached Sam Boyd and Bill Boyd and asked them to step in and run these two properties with a management team to keep them operating. And then subsequently, uh, Sam and Bill Boyd wind up uh, purchasing these properties in uh, 1984. Okay, well you say they came in, the gaming control came in and raided the place and shut it down because, uh, you know, before Boyd owned it, it was kind of wild, wild west and, and the Fremont Casino has a pretty rich history in, in mob, mob color, doesn't it? it? It did back in the day, it surely did. Yeah. These walls could talk. <laughs> That's right. In fact, uh, at the top of the hotel tower, I, I've noticed from uh, being up in a surrounding tower, that there's a, a room up on the on the top of this place that uh, is a little out of place. Well, you know, back when this property was built, it was the tallest building in Las Vegas. At how many stories? Uh, we have uh, 14 stories here. Okay. And back then, uh, that uh, was used as a observation post for the police department. It gave them a good view of uh, the surrounding area. Exactly right. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, except that I understand that they weren't the only ones using that space. Uh, that, uh, or maybe, maybe uh, the sheriff was uh, sharing it with somebody at the time. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know the details on that. So. Yeah, and I, I understand that uh, when Binion's built a tower next door, that uh, they were looking down and they, they were seeing more than perhaps anybody wanted them to see. I, I don't know. I can't comment <laughs> on that. So. Well, this is a very, very cool place. Uh, you know, I was getting ready for the show because I take notes and stuff to keep myself relatively organized. And I went over here to the buffet to grab a bite and uh, and uh, take those notes. And, and yet, that wasn't always a buffet. No, actually, you know, when you mentioned uh, uh, Wayne Newton, right? actually, that was a showroom years and years ago. That's where it was. And that's where Wayne Newton used to play when he was 14 years old. I, he was playing with his brother at the time, wasn't he? When that's, he what I that's what I understand, yeah. And a young guy, how does a 14-year-old, I wonder, uh, hit a place like Las Vegas and, and make it big and be here all those years later? What an amazing character. Yeah, very amazing, yeah. But this is a good, I mean, that's that's what makes the Fremont Casino, you know, so special. It, it It's just got all those roots of, uh, of Las Vegas. You know, we sit on the busiest corner on Fremont Street. We The amenities that we offer here, of course, you just mentioned a buffet. We also have a cafe. And we have the number one Tony Romas in the world here at the Fremont. And you'll see people lined up, 40, 50 people lined up before the restaurant even opens. So, uh, and, and it's not a small place. I mean, the volume coming out of there is amazing. 
It is. We, we do a tremendous amount of business, very popular restaurant. It's a great, uh, great restaurant for us here at the Fremont. And if they don't want to wait in line and they don't do buffets, you also offer some food around the corner. Yeah, we have Lanai Express, which is uh, uh, some quick takeout Chinese, uh, good, great Chinese food. Uh, also, we offer some American cuisine in that restaurant as well. Okay, and I, I'm looking back this way across the casino floor. I, I talked about you guys being a si serious gaming house. Uh, you also have a very serious sports book. We not only have a sports book, we have a race book as well. So it's race and sports. Uh, our hub is the Orleans. It's where the lines are set. Uh, you can bet basketball, football, uh, baseball, you name it, we offer it. Yeah, I'm more of an entertainment guy, but I have friends that are very big into sports booking, and, yeah. and they shop the odds all around the town because it's not the same everywhere, and, and they really find you guys uh, offer an aggressive package. Well, we have some of the best lines in town yeah. here uh, for, with Boyd Gaming. And, and so uh, Boyd Gaming, you know, that's a very, very large gaming company uh, all throughout. Uh, Las Vegas, but downtown, this is not your only Boyd-owned property. No, we own three properties downtown, the Fremont, California Hotel, and Main Street. Uh, the California Hotel, uh, you know, the major market is the Hawaiian market. Yeah. We actually fondly refer to the Ninth Island. <laughs> the Ninth yeah. Island. Yeah. Well, and you, you say you do a lot of business with the Hawaiian market. You actually have a charter uh, flight that goes back and forth to Hawaii and Las Vegas all week. Yes, we do. It's called Vacations Hawaii. We bring in four flights in from Oahu a week. We sell an air, room, and food package to Hawaiians, and uh, the Fremont gets its fair share. Predominantly, Cal and Main, Street's gets their, Main Street gets their share as well. Hey, Main Street, th that, it's hard to describe how very, very special the Main Street is because uh, it is loaded with, with artifacts and antiques and feels like nothing else in Las Vegas. You know, it's a beautiful property. Uh, it has its own amenities too. And one thing that makes us unique uh, as far as our three downtown properties, our average stay from our customers is four nights. And the amount of restaurants that we have, we offer a great variety of different food venues for our customers. Let's take Main Street Station. It is the only on-site microbrewery downtown uh, and it's called the Triple Seven. Triple Seven, I've been there many times. Great uh, menu, anything from sushi to pizza. It's got 15 uh, uh, HD uh, flat panel TV, so it's a great, great restaurant to uh, dine or to watch your uh, favorite sporting event. Yeah, I've been there, and um, you also have a restaurant, a high-end steak restaurant there that actually has an old uh, train car in it. Well, it's called the Pullman Grill. Uh, we use that for private functions. Uh, right now, but it's a gorgeous restaurant. So if uh, you know we have customers that come in and they want to have a private function for 50 to 100 people, it's a it's a great venue. Uh, another great restaurant that we uh, that the California Hotel has is a Zagat Award-winning Redwood Bar and Grill that's been around for years and years. That's all about the wine, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, good good wines in there, right? Great wine, great prime rib, uh, great specials. It's just an all-around a great restaurant. Well, you guys do such a good job. I mean, it, it, you're just such a solid package. And, uh, you know, here at the Fremont, you're right in the, the middle and, and right in the thick of things, right across from the Third Street stage. And uh, what a wonderful place. Uh, you know, it, there's another thing. I can't figure out how you guys do this, but you can come into the casino bar here and get, what, Coronas and Heineken's for just $2 a bottle? Yeah, you know, now, it's... How, uh, how do you do that when the strip is charging $8 for the same bottle? And, you know, a lot of times I'll, I'll run into some younger folks and I ask them, where are you staying at? And they'll say they're staying at one of the strip parties. They go, what brought you downtown? And they got a Corona and they hold it up and say, this is what brought us downtown. <laughs> $2 Coronas, $2 Heineken's, you, you can't beat it. So that's a special that we continue to do. Uh, uh, it's also made us, you know, drives a lot of traffic in our building. Yeah. So it, it's, it's been a very, very uh, uh, good marketing tool for us. And that value-oriented ori uh, program is consistent with your, your good gamble, your food prices. I mean, it just uh, it's, it's nice to come in here and, and have just a, a nice casual time. We do. We offer $3 blackjack, $3 craps. Ah. You know, you know, we're I saw a single deck down here. Yeah, we have a single deck. So where in town can you get that kind of uh, value for your dollar? Great gaming, great drinks, great food. The Fremont's a place to be. All right, and if there's one thing that uh, somebody might miss, something maybe tucked away in the corner or something that you wouldn't want them to miss, but what might it be? Our best kept secret here is a Second Street Grill. Offers classy dining in a casual setting, Pacific Rim, yeah. uh, 
and American cuisine. It's just a great restaurant, a uh, great price point. I encourage anybody to try it. You won't be disappointed. And the decor is great for a date night. It's very rich and it's very, very quiet and beautiful. Very, and, yeah, and the service yeah. is all that. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Jim. I appreciate you being our, right. our guest well, and, thanks and for having me. putting us out in this uh, very special spot. All right. Thanks, man. Stay tuned. We're going to take a quick break. I'm Kelly Clinton. <laughs> that sucks. I wonder if Joan Rivers is watching. Oh, oh, please. Oh, my God. Who cares? Oh, I don't have a different one. You know who watches this show? Wayne Newton. You got that right, Kelly. I think you're absolutely beautiful. And so is a Joan lady. Five, six, nine, twelve. Doggy shit. More camera time for me. Hey, I wonder if Cher's watching. Oh, please, I have so many other things to do. <laughs> Woo! Hi, I'm Kelly Clinton. I'm the host of Talk Tales, and you're watching the Vegas Video Network. <laughs> that was horrible. This is David Ivey from Pub Crawl. It's funny, because this is David from... You should, you should, no, you should just leave it on. Hi, I'm David Ivey from Pub Crawl, and you're watching the Vegas Video Network. And see, Las Vegas and Fremont Street Experience in particular has a really rich music scene. And if you're familiar, you'll definitely know this, this uh, group that we're going to talk to tonight. Yellow Brick Road is widely regarded as one of the best bands here in Las Vegas. And joining us, we've got David. How are you? Good. And Kelly, good to see you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, you guys are both members of uh, this very, very popular band that plays out here on Fremont Street and other places around town. You're, you're the lead singer. Yes, I am. And you uh, are doing both vocals and bass. Uh, some vocals and bass guitar. Yes. Oh, when, but you have different you have different ranges, and so uh, do, what, what, how do you kind of divide up who sings what? <laughs> well, I'd say, uh, you know, Yellow Brick Road has uh, always been kind of known to sort of mimic the artists we're trying to um, you know portray so right. Kelly's got a really really high vocal range he does all the Boston and Journey and I'll Led Zeppelin and I sing all the hard stuff yeah exactly <laughs> hey, I get the easy stuff you, you get all the easy yeah. is that it? Get some Dave, Beatles Dave and Pink Floyd whispers and does the sexy stuff oh does he? the <laughs> yeah. Beatles uh, the nice quiet I wear the cod stuff. piece and all. <laughs> <laughs> cinches up real tight and hits those high notes does that work? Uh, you want to try it? No, uh, I, I, no I don't. <laughs> so, I mean, so you, we talked a little bit about the music, but how would you kind of say the music that you guys play is organized? Uh, it's, is it classic rock? Is it um, what? Yeah, I'd say it's um, it's classic rock, uh, 70s, 80s, uh, a little bit of 60s. Um, yeah, you know, classic rock has become such an overused term. Yeah, I know, I know. Everybody's doing classic rock. Every radio station plays classic rock. It's so overused, I wish they'd come up with a different term. We try to do the upper echelon in terms of musical difficulty and stuff that's tasteful. Uh, and I don't want to name any artists with the, that aren't tasteful, but we try to do stuff that's musically challenging for us and also enjoyable for the audience. Well, I think uh, the reason we like having you guys out there is it's all of, uh, all of our favorite things. And I don't just mean mine. When you go out there, you see folks from all over the world uh, and they, they kind of know the tunes and, and, and sing the lyrics. And, and so what's it like to play out in front of a Fremont crowd? It's not like you're sitting in a showroom. <laughs> well, uh, Dave, I'll just say there's no place like this in the world. And uh, Yeah, some colorful characters out there on Fremont Street. <laughs> it's a human uh, zoo out there, isn't it? It is, yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I haven't been all over the world, but I've played in Canada and Mexico and all over America, and there's, there's only one Fremont Street. Absolutely. And it has the uh, it has the, gi the the gigantic TV up there. It's the largest TV in the world. I believe it is, isn't it? It has that reputation, well deserved, and it's nice to be up there and down <laughs> on the ground away floor. From the zoo? Yeah. yeah, well, it's always a zoo. There's, like I said, there's no no other place like this on earth to perform or to see or to be down in the audience and just enjoy it. Well, people do have a good time. So uh, I am curious, like, how did and maybe your stories are similar or not, but uh, at what point did you decide you were going to be a musician? Go ahead, Dave. It's your turn. Well, I'd say uh, I moved to Vegas in uh, 1982, and uh, as a 
as a small child, I was uh, into the Beatles very heavily. Um, saw my first Beatlemania show here, oh, really? uh, and it was uh, their their dedication to making it sound just like the Beatles, just like the record. Um, I thought, you know, that's really cool that they can do something like that, and that kind of got me started into, um, you know, wanting to play the music of my favorite uh, bands, Beatles and Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, that kind of stuff. And, and so you've been doing it with YBR for how long? Well, for uh, with YBR, I've been uh, almost 11 years now. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Good steady band, good steady gigs. It's it's the best the best you could ask for. Uh, well, what about cram, you? Crandoli Cram. Well. Kind of a similar story. I, you know, usually you pick these things up as a small child, which I did. And the th one thing that Dave and I have in common is we're huge Beatles fans. And as a small kid, I saw and heard the Beatles, and I was hooked. Beatles, and Beatles, isn't that yeah. And I, they taught me to sing and taught me about harmony and songwriting and everything else. And from there, everything else just kind of blossomed, grew, and destroyed itself all at the same time. <laughs> it's, it's amazing how influential they have been on our culture and when you see it come down and influence two people so very profoundly to determine what you're going to do for a living, it's truly amazing. Not, yeah. only, uh, not only influenced us, but most of the other bands we play uh, probably picked up guitars because they saw the Beatles yeah, on that Ed Sullivan show, you know. It doesn't so, matter who it is. Yeah, know? Aerosmith and uh, a lot of the bands said... Soundgarden. You know. Yeah, they said that's when I, you know, decided I wanted to be a musician and well, so, hey, you, you're out here every Thursday night right now. It's yes. uh, Thursday night, and so I think you're actually late. I think I'm keeping you late from uh, jumping on stage. You better run Take across the street. <laughs> Take your time. You have any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> Go out there and entertain, guys. Thank Thank you. You. Right. Been a pleasure. Right. Thank you. Well, we talked about uh, the crazy crowd out there, and it's always fun for me to send Michael out there with a microphone and ask, where are you from? What are your names? names? Mary. I'm, I'm Carrie. Carrie. I'm Don. Steve. Sergio Gonzalez. Javier Gonzalez. Ed. Bob. Uh, my name is Burr Angley. Uh, my name is Connor Langford. And where are you guys visiting us from? Ohio. La Habra, California. I am coming from Mexico, from Sinaloa. Seattle. Limerick, Ireland. Minneapolis, Minnesota. What's your favorite thing? What's the most exciting thing about Fremont Street that you like about this place? The lights, the history, and you gotta check out the new zip line. Okay, no, that's uh, perfect. Uh, everything is nice here. I love it. These footballs. Yeah, I, I love the screen. This is something unique. I mean, I haven't seen something like this never before. I like the odds of gambling here better than the main strip. Lights, cool. Me being a video man, the big screen. And is there anyone you want to say hello to back home? Yes, to the whole world. This is the best place to come. Okay, players, vengan acá a la calle Primo, aquí en Las Vegas. Vengan, no se van a arrepentir. Come here to Las Vegas, to, calle, to Street Primo. Very nice. Yeah, it's just a lively atmosphere here. You guys do good work and, you know, uh, the women here are fine. The more of these I drink, the better they look. So don't change that at all. This is going to be seen by our president and CEO, Jeff Victor. If you can ask any question about Fremont Street, does one come to mind? Are we going to get more music, more live bands? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, you know, you just met a couple guys from Yellow Brick Road. But this year is going to be truly unique for us. We're building our third permanent stage down at the end of the street. And so this year we'll have more nights of live entertainment than any other year in our history. So come on out here and enjoy some live tunes. We'll take a, take a quick break. Traditional media believes that after about three minutes, you'll tune out. Most Vegas media companies think if it doesn't jiggle, you won't tune in. At the Vegas Video Network, we think both are wrong. The Vegas Video Network is the first and only live online broadcast network that specializes in insider news and expert views about Vegas. We combine great storytelling with the ability to watch when and where you want on your computer, mobile device, or television. Discover the real Las Vegas. Visit VegasVideoNetwork.com. So you've been very helpful to keep in touch with us, and we want you to keep doing that. If you would, please feel free to send us an email at fse at vegasvideonetwork.com, or you can send us a voice-based uh, uh, web uh, voicemail by going to Vegas Video Network and clicking on the Start Recording button. Of course, you'll need a microphone. Or if you want to watch us live and send us a live chat, Scott will get it and flag me down. If you've got better things to do on your Thursday night than sit here and watch us uh, live, you can catch us after the fact on the vegasvideonetwork.com. YouTube, iTunes, Roku, and every Saturday on KSHP 1400 AM at noon.
So we've talked a lot about uh, all the wonderful things there are to do in downtown as so we created this segment called Meet the Neighbors. And uh, this week, I'm very excited to talk about you know, the shift and, and the explosion that's happening in downtown is people coming down here to work, people coming down here to play, and over the last handful of years coming down here to live. And that all got started by uh, a gentleman sitting next to me. Our first guest here is Sam Cherry of Cherry Development, who, uh, Sam, good to see you. Great to see you. You, uh, you pioneered, you were, the, you, were the, you were the first dude to build a, a high rise uh, downtown. I mean, that's, uh, you were either the bravest guy I've ever met or, or the craziest. And I think a lot of people, maybe even myself included at the time, thought you were the latter. There, there was a long line of people calling me crazy. And, you know, really, the, the only reason we were able to get our, or I was able to really see something down here is I didn't have, uh, I was young, I, I hadn't been burned, I didn't have blinders on. It was something that was new for us. and. Uh, we didn't go out to the rest of the valley and develop like traditional developers. Right. We wanted infill projects. So yeah. we came in with uh, anyone that tells us no is wrong attitude, and uh, we got our projects off the ground. It's good to be young, isn't it's it? It's good to be young, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so uh, how long ago did Soho open? Oh, geez, it's been eight years now that it's been up and going, and the building is full. We were able to get a second project off the ground called Newport Lofts. Uh, and then with the downturn, we had a third project, Stan High, that didn't get off the ground. Uh, but we were still down here and then still active in the downtown area. Yeah, so, you know, you had tremendous su su success with Soho and then Newport, and then the world kind of took a left turn on all of us, and, and you were right there. I mean, real estate in Las Vegas was tough for a period, and so you... I mean, that must have been a really difficult time for you. Oh, it was brutal. I mean, the first project we did was a $65 million project. The second project we did was a $90 million project. And we had a commitment for a $200 million project. We were $20 million into it, and then everything just collapsed. So for a long time, our, our industry has been crushed. It's slowly coming back. We started to get into hospitality. Uh, we opened up a bar, the Lady Sylvia. Been there. A little grocery store, Resnick's Grocery. I'm there twice a week. Uh, we have Globe Salon, a hair salon. I was there today. That's a great tenant of ours. <laughs> and uh, Pop Up Pizza, which we brought downtown. So we're slowly getting back into the housing industry with apartment buildings. Right. We're more excited than ever in what's happening in downtown. Well, you know, and, and me too. I mean, I, as you know, I live uh, down here in a high rise, not one of yours, but uh, something closer to Fremont yep. Street. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm totally bought in. But I'm not born and raised here. You, 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 you grew up here. Yeah, I grew up here, and I grew up in the suburbs. Um, and really, up, up until I really got involved into downtown, I really didn't appreciate what a community was. You know, what it meant to have a sidewalk or a new business opening up. You just you don't get that out in the suburbs. So being down here has really opened my eyes to a new way of living. And uh, it's been 12 years that I've been down here. I love it. I'm passionate about it. I live down here. I work down here. I party down here. That's it. It's great. It really is great. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm same, same. Uh, what, what are some of the things that you like about downtown? Uh, you know, what are the things that you get out and do uh, when you're out? Uh, we'll go to Fremont East, mm -hmm. which uh, has a, a variety of new bars that have opened up, a coffee shop that's opened up. The Arts District has all kinds of galleries that have opened up. Right. The Smith Center has opened up, which is a phenomenal performing arts center. Uh, it, it's really, it's endless. You can go golfing five minutes away from here. Uh, it, you know, for people that that come to downtown Las Vegas, they can stay in a casino, they can go five blocks away, get a great experience, come back, enjoy gaming, and then go back to wherever they came from with a great experience. And it's a cool vibe when you kind of mix the, the tourists and the, the locals and the residents and all that. It's a fun place to be. It really is. It really is. All right. Well, you know, I, I, I'm in your building all the time, as I just described. Uh, I just think you're the, just the neatest guy for having done stupidly or brilliantly uh, all that you have down here you, you really <laughs> made a difference and uh, thank you thank you yeah uh, you you started a movement that's that's very important stuff and for you're your young man now for you to have done that eight or ten years ago uh, well, I'm 134 years old now yeah, so. <laughs> that's great <laughs> You feel it sometimes? I do. <laughs> is that from uh, building a building or just living and partying it, downtown? It, it, you know, it's taxing. You're, you're up all day and you feel like you have a lot of responsibility and a lot of people to, to answer to and be responsible for. And uh, it takes its toll, but that's part of the gig. That it's is part, of, part the gig. of the gig. So, yeah. Well, Sam, thanks again for joining Thank us you. on Appreciate the show. It. Thank you. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with Best Bets. We're here on Fremont Street with... Brenda Andrade. And what is your name? And Liz Lemon. And Liz Lemon. And where are you from? I was actually born and raised here in Vegas. Born and raised in Las Vegas, and what about you? I am from Stockton, California! Stockton, California. 
California, the Golden State. How long of a time have you been coming down here? Are you oh, I've been coming here since I was born. My dad's actually worked at Fremont for over 22 years, so really? I'm totally native to Fremont Street experience. I love it here. I love it as much as I loved it the first time I came. And Brenda, you said this is that you're from originally from California. Yes. What was your first impression when you set foot on Fremont Street for the first time? What, uh, what, what struck you about the place? Lights and people and excitement. I don't know. The classic vibe that you get from this part of Vegas. So much better than the strip. You know, on our last Best Bets uh, segment, I had Megan on here, and she and I were still recovering from the uh, New Year's Eve celebration. Uh, we're pretty much over it now, but uh, right around the corner, we have a whole different New Year's celebration, and here to tell us about the Chinese New Year is Jani Lau. How are you, Jani? I'm good, good to see thanks. You. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. So uh, give us a little history on Chinese New Year. It's not the same week every year. It's not is because it's based on the lunar calendar year. Yeah. So last year, well, it still is right now, the Year of the Dragon, so I'm sporting my dragon pin. Okay. But uh, February 10th is officially is the Year of the Water Snake. And what, uh, what's the significance of the water snake? Yeah, I know. Snake usually sounds kind of not that good, but seriously, snakes are great. Those people who are born in the snake are graceful. They're very exciting, yet has a very dark side to them. Very dark side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, did, did I hear something about navigating and how snakes navigate well or something? Absolutely, yeah. Actually, there's a Chinese uh, uh, saying that having a snake around is actually good for the family. That means you never go starve. So they bring a lot of good food and and in, in, in wealth into the household. Oh, very good. There you go. And so tell us about what you're bringing down here this year. Last year we did our first Chinese New Year Abs with you, and, yes. and you're coming back, and so yes, what, we what's are, that gonna look like? Absolutely, we're very excited to be back, and thank you for FSC and LVCBA for sponsoring the event. It's happening February 8th, 9th, and 10th, and we have three marquee events. It's the first ever Miss AAPI USA pageant, so really? the beautiful ladies, really? yes. I hear they'll be in your show next was in a couple weeks. So oh, is that right? Absolutely. Nice. <laughs> and then we on uh, Saturday, we're actually uh, kicking off the 5K walk and run, benefiting the American Heart Association. And then on Sunday, we're doing the, uh, from 10 to 12, we have the McDonald's Las Vegas Spring Festival Parade. So we're very, very excited to be here. And of course, our Third Street stage will have cultural performances and great right. food. You guys had great entertainment last yes. time. And and so, you know, to kick off the event last year, you very foolishly put me on stage, not knowing, I, I didn't know enough. I've done a little bit of homework uh, since. And so I got up there, I wasn't dressed appropriately. I hear this year you're going to uh, try and get me covered with. Well, you're a very stylish man. So yes, we, but we're gonna provide you with some traditional garb. You know, not necessarily this gold, but we'll, we'll, we'll make you look good. Is it gonna be gold or what, what's the colors that I should? For you, yes, definitely gold. Gold is good. Gold, gold and possibly right. some red for prosperity. And so last year also you tried to get me to uh, send a little luck to the crowd <laughs> and tried to teach me like one one measly sentence of Mandarin which right. I butchered very badly. <laughs> The crowd thought it was funny, so I kind of got away with it. So tell me what it is I'm supposed to say. You're, you're supposed to say, Gong Si Fa Cai. So Gong Si Fa Cai just means, you know, Happy New Year or lots of prosperity. Okay, well, I'm going to have you write that down okay. for me so I can spend between <laughs> now and then practicing. Absolutely. All right, so if people are trying to plan a trip and they want to see all this color, all this entertainment, all this great food, and they want to join you for your event and they want to be here when? February 8th, 9th, and 10th. All right, very good. All right. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. All right. Stay tuned. We're going to wrap up the show in just a minute. Three, two, one. Well, I need to come up with something funny to oh, say. Geez. Three, two, one. Wow. <laughs> but the co host. Really, you, I have to say watch it. Well, we're. I'm doing. That's how you do it. You dare really? watch it. There okay. you go. I got it. We? We're, we, we are the odds couple. Hi, my name is Scott Pritchard. And I am Anthony Padilla. You're watching the Vegas Video Network. You are. You are. We are, too. So that's this week's show. Uh, I'd like to thank my guests. We had Jim, Kelly, David, Sam, and, and Janie, who uh, brought me out a little gift. I think she said it was a three-legged toad of some sort for good luck. I, that's great. I'll put that right on the corner of my desk later. Uh, listen, I hope once again you got an appreciation for all the wonderful things that there are to, to do downtown and that you feel closer to the people behind the scenes that 
are making that all happen. Thanks to uh, the Fremont Casino for being our host. This is a really cool environment to be in. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in about two weeks.